Hey everybody, it's Norm Ferrar, AKA The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, The Rise of the Microbrands. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. All right, so today I'm hoping that uh, we get our guest, my buddy, uh, Carlos Alvarez. Uh, he's going to be talking about building communities communities online. Um, Carlos is responsible for um, the largest uh, Amazon group. Uh, I th think I'm going to confirm this, but I think it's over 40,000. Um, plus, he's got an incredible brand or group of brands that um, put it this way. He's a very successful Amazon seller. Anyways, hopefully he will be on. I know that uh, we were just waiting for him to come on. Um, other than that, I think Kelsey's going to tap dance and, you know, we'll just do this. Or he might just be in the fetal position. No, Are you Carly, in the fetal position? Carlos is here. He's Oh, he is. Okay, yeah, yeah, so you don't have to tap dance or go into the fetal position. No, no, no not today. Not yet. <laughs> we Because we could do one hour just talking about that stash. Oh, uh, you know, I think you're going to miss it. Uh, I'm, it's going to be here till what, Monday and then what? it's gone forever till next year, at least. So yeah, get ready. That to should be a, a poll in the group. <laughs> yeah. Who loves my stash? Put there like we go. Up in the <laughs> comment section. Um, but yeah, uh, so it's black Friday today. Um, so in our Facebook group, we put up, um, a little thread for some self promotion stuff. If, if you know any sales discounts, you can go ahead and uh, post there and yeah, everyone from the Lunch with Norm group can be adding to their, the different sales that's happening on uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. It looks like we got Rad. Going hey, Rad. And uh, just a, a question to the audience uh, to get us started. Like, what are you looking for uh, this Black Friday? Um, are you looking for electronics, um, memberships? I know SEM Rush, I think, is having a deal. So yeah, let us know what you're looking for. Um, and put it in the comments section but yeah. uh yeah that i want to know how everybody's black friday's going like let, yeah. when we get together on monday well that's going to be cyber monday which i think will outperform black friday we'll see but um maybe by wednesday uh we'll get some people on and if you're interested uh coming on live uh just let us know in the group but um all right hey, and simon's back as well Simon, happy, happy uh, black dr. friday Carl. and dr cause all right okay so Kelsey. Yes. Tell us to smash things. Tell us to ring things. Yes. Okay. So follow us on social media, smash that like button, ring the bell. You guys know the drill. Um, and yeah, uh, we are on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. If you end up missing an episode, you can always find it on YouTube. The full episodes go directly there. Um, as for podcasts, you can find us on Spotify and Apple. And I think that's about it. All right. So uh, other than that, we are broadcasting live on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And if you're watching on our replay, skip it. Skip all this. Go right to the meat and potatoes. Or some people have said sweet ca sweet potato casserole, Kels. I've never heard of sweet potato casserole. And Kelsey's saying, you know, was bugging me that I've never heard of this. Um, Tim Jordan was telling me about it the other day. I said, it's not a Canadian thing. I've never heard of it. But um, anyways... Look, uh, if you're on our Facebook page or my profile page, you can always go over to Norm Ferrari, a.k.a. The Beard Guy, and check out this episode with a ton of other full um, episodes, highlights, and content. Now, let me see here. If you have any questions, throw them over into the comments section. We will get to them. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy the show. Where are you, sir? What's up? Holy, you almost had Kelsey doing tap dancing for, you know, the hour. You want, you want to hear something funny? Well, I, I was tap dancing because my calendar showed this next week. What? I, I was about to set up the new iPhone. I sit back and I see an email and obviously it's from Kelsey. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to answer this. And it's like, here's your stream yard link. And I'm like, huh? So I did a total tap dance panic and I'm just like, well, it's happening. Let's do this. <laughs> There we go. Can you imagine me seeing you at an event and you get to throw up in my face that I, you know, I stood you up at a at lunch with Norm? I couldn't live that. I couldn't live with that. Hey, it reminds me of high school. It happened a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, uh, all right, Carlos. So, any if why don't you just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do? I am a uh, serial entrepreneur. Uh, the vast majority of my businesses touch Amazon in some sort of way. Um, I have an army of brilliant uh, uh, virtual assistants and domestic employees that make me look really good. Um, having a record year this year, uh, being in you know predominantly e-commerce, uh, I, I organize the I founded and organized the largest Amazon seller meetup group in the world. I think total members were, were like 44,000 as part as part of the group, but just local in Miami, we have you know an over 5,000 active members, which for a local community is insane. Right. <laughs> oh, I see Sharon. What's up, Sharon? One of my favorite people. I all see the way, the all the way from Tel Aviv. Yeah, I feel special now. I've made it. <laughs> Definitely. But um, besides that, you know, happily married, four dogs, two kids. Uh, I know Norm. And uh, that's I think that's the good intro without taking up the entire show doing my intro. OK, I do want to talk about one thing because uh, you got started in this space. And I, I love this story with uh, and I don't think this is any secret or anything. No, no, not at all. But with reptiles and bugs. Yeah, you want to get into that because I will. Uh, I just don't know if people like get bored of the story. Today. No, I mean just do Reader's Digest, but it's a really cool story. Yeah, Re Reader's Digest version is I, I was starting to sell on. E this is, this is fifteen. I mean, this is almost fifteen years ago. No, this is no, this is almost seventeen years ago. Uh, yeah, about seventeen years ago, and I was doing eBay, uh, playing around with Amazon, but eBay was the main driver of revenue. And I, when I started exploring Amazon, one of my hottest selling products was this adult novelty product, this little ring uh, with a motor and a switch. And I'll leave it there. I guess it's a very peachy show and I don't want to like put your editors to work, but <laughs> like that's what, that's what it was. And I, friends and family at that point see like, wow, this, this guy's gonna, he's gonna, make something of himself now he's not going to just like od or be in prison and just, i was a dropout of elementary school going nowhere fast so they're like okay let's support this so they pull up eighty one thousand dollars and they invested in me and i immediately went to go buy these adult novelty products because it was the only like i want to buy eighty one thousand dollars of these things that were like 21 cents a piece right so you know, can you imagine <laughs> and the I had no concept of the containers, the sizes, all that stuff. So in short, the factory didn't have it on hand, and I went somewhere else to get it made uh, on Alibaba. Back then, again, if you knew Alibaba, you were in like a very small group. And I, I got ripped off, in short. So since I lost all the money, I needed to do something to not let everybody know that I got ripped off, and you know, Carlos did it again. So I started selling the things that I had, and two of them were reptiles. And two of these snakes that I went to sell, uh, Burmese python, a Colombian red tail boa, they're in pillowcases, and I'm about to sell them in this reptile. I ask if they'll buy them in a reptile store. And the person in front of me was paying $25 for 50 live worms. And in desperation, I was like, you know, I'll dig. And I'll dig for worms. Where do they live? Speeding up through some of the process, I find an article in a public library that says that, you know, zoos and our pathology department should um, breed insects instead of paying top dollar on the private market. And I was like connecting these dots and I'm like, can you sell this online? And I see that some people, you know, some reptile owners are buying live insects online. I started breeding them. Uh, code enforcement almost kicks me out of the house. My ex-girlfriend leaves me and I start selling them online. Um, pretty much 60, 70 units a day back then at like $85 a box. And the, uh, about a 10 months later, a company approaches me and buys my company for $2.6 million. Um, so I think it was a bad deal, but it was the best thing to happen to me then. And I, I almost go broke again in a year because I'm just partying, thinking that that amount of money after taxes leaves you to like wealthy for the rest of your life. Um, and I didn't want to go broke again. And the only thing I had done successfully really business wise in my life was, you know, this Amazon eBay thing. So I kept going and I started another brand. And since then it's just been pedal to the metal, uh, amazing times. 
Now, I'm just curious. Uh, do you stick to the 80-20? Do you cut, if something's going wrong for you, not turning the results, do you cut it quick? God, that's a good question. That's an easy question that I should be able to answer pretty fast. I I want to say that I'm very, cons I'm very conservative or methodical on what I get into and that like, for example, let's just use Amazon private label for an example. I know most people will, you know, they'll open up a few tools and, and then they'll look at these tools over a weekend and an inspirational webinar. And then next thing you know, they're ordering three things from China. And while the products are on the way, they're then figuring out what is FBA. Like, mm -hmm. and I, you know, that would be like the rapid approach or like Sharon actually is the person in the Amazon space that I, I think my approach towards like what I look for in a PL is most similar, but I really do like to take even longer. Uh, I like to take four months of looking into what's the content creation look like for this. If I was to build a list with an email using email marketing, like, well, what does that content look like? And am I set up for it? What does the group building and the community look like for this? And, and I, I go through all that and check all those boxes before I pull the trigger on the product. So I've not, knock on wood, I've never launched an unsuccessful PL. So I've not had to cut it. In other areas of my life, I've definitely had to cut things. <laughs> and, you know, that's a great segue going into today's show about building community. So you're, when you're looking at a product, you do a ton of research. Sure. I don't think a lot of people do a ton of research, uh, but that's the starting point of your community, correct? Most definitely. So why should we start our own community? Well, to not be, um, to not be a slave or to not be in a red ocean. How about that? If, if you don't, I feel like nowadays, if you've ever read the blue ocean strategy book, which I, I love you, if you do what everybody else does to get into their businesses, then you're going to kind of be where everybody else is at. And I don't want to be there. So I've found that most people feel things like building community, going to a farmer's market, uh, exhibiting at a show that that's just too much work nowadays. It's too far away from laptop life, laptop lifestyle. Also, if you build a community for me, I get into products that I'm passionate about or would like to be passionate about. So it's just a personal choice. So because I am, it leaves community building open for me. You know, if I'm into paper clips and I'm passionate about paper clips, Norm, every time we speak, I'm going to bring up to you how you're missing out because you're not in the paper clip community. Like I'm really involved in it. I can be convincing and having a community for me, one of the most direct benefits um, for the, my products selling more and that I would encourage people to approach it this way as well is that I'm not as reliant on PPC. I have zero reliance on black hat strategies for launching. I just have my list. I have my people. And if I'm launching peanut butter or paper clips or insects, they want to support me and they want to buy it. So when you're doing this, what platforms are you generally working on to build the community? There's not a lot of great community uh, platforms out there currently to build a, an, a local in-person community. Um, the, the, the best one out there that I know of is meetup.com. And I've, I've used it for launching. Like I, I launched some PL brands in the past that had to do with the scuba industry, for example. And what I did was I just collaborated with a, a scuba store owner and I'm like, hey, look, I want you to offer these lessons on how to, you know, get scuba certified um, for free. Air quotes here for those who are just, you know, audio listening to this. Let me get on the screen. <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, I, I want you to offer it for free and I'm going to kind of pay you on the back end. And, and I know that anyone that's first of all, I know that's going to be a huge magnet for anyone that wants to get into this. And that when I try to sell you my snorkel or like my mask, like you're going to buy it. Like it's nothing compared to the value that you receive from the group. So I've done that. I've, you know, we've launched dog grooming brushes by going to dog parks and creating meetup events at dog parks um, and building community that way. But meetup.com seems to be the easiest centralized place to have it. And then like anything else, you want to be connected, not reliant on a platform. So uh, uh, many of the people in my group, shockingly, even with this huge number, we have each other's phone number. Like we can communicate on Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, email. And that's really not 
the same as, and not to say that this is not a good thing to have, but like Facebook groups, I love them. They're very powerful. But let me ask you, like in a group of 10,000 people in a Facebook group, how many actual phone numbers do you think the founder of that group has of the people in that group? White hat or black hat? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're thinking. <laughs> Um, but like it, on average in the norm, it's the norm. You like that? The pun, the norm. There we go. In, in the norm, <laughs> in the norm. So like in the norm, that, that is not the norm and being right. able to have such direct communication with your, with your, your audience is, is huge. Another side benefit of it is this has been said so much. It seems cheesy, but being a, uh, in a position of like leadership in your, in your community, um, an authority. What is it? The authority, an authority in your niche that has benefits. Sure does. Yeah. It has very real benefits. It does not happen by accident, but many, many people and nearly all of my competitors, what they would say is it's not worth it. It's too much time. It's too much work. You know, there's not a program. I can just click a button and it does it for me. So I'm not interested. So to me, that's music to my ears. That's that blue ocean um, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm in it and I've just leveraged it in all of my businesses, except the first insect business um, that I've launched to date. So you can use and I've I've never used Meetup. I see your emails coming out all the time on Meetup. And you um, open I, all of them and you read every them. every one. And I Absolutely. respond uh, to every one that you send out five times a day. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> no, but uh, I've never used Meetup. This is the first time I've heard you uh, talk about this. And doesn't that, like if you're working with, with Meetup in Miami, so you're geo-targeting people, so you can get enough information um, within the Miami area, Fort Lauderdale area, uh, to do a launch or to build off of Meetup to get a much larger group or community? Um, yes, you can, you can definitely start in the local community. But just because I'm based in Miami does not mean that I can't have a meetup group in Germany. So I can just set it up with the, the address being in Germany and it will target in Germany. So I can have multiple meetup groups in different communities. So let's say I wanted to start an Amazon and this is, this is actually something we're flirting with, but like, let's say there, there's somebody in Canada that wants to start an Amazon seller meetup group. And they're like, Carlos, you create all this content. You have all the processes. Um, can we like almost be a chapter of your community and how would I draw the people? So it'd be very easy for me to just create that extension or that chapter of in that other, you know, area that I, geographically I'm rarely ever at and begin building an audience in that area. So okay. yes, you can do it at scale. And when, when you first started talking about this, so I was thinking actual meetups, because when we talk, you have actual physical in-person you know, events. Yeah. Yeah. In-person events. But yeah, I guess you could do all this virtually and just set it up. Is that correct? You just have Zoom events and. Yes, but I feel like there is a difference between if I go just virtual and just online, then it's it's not the same as in person. I'm now getting into that closer to that red ocean. I'm, comp I'm competing against much bigger fish. Right. So what I mean is if I connect with somebody to create a meetup event into a meetup group in Canada, then that person's actually going to host events and, um, I'm going to support in the way of content topics, um, you know, processes on the back end that do the whole promotion cycle of, of what needs to happen. There's a lot that goes behind an actual event. Right. So let's talk about, we've got meetup. What are some other types of community platforms that we can use? What we, and we've got Facebook groups that you can build and we'll talk about that in a sec, but uh, any other platforms that you're using or that you can suggest? Uh, there's not even a close second. The, the next thing after that is public message boards. Like, um, that you, you go on Google and you'll hear something like, you know, you'll put in a niche and then put event near me and you'll yeah. find out that, you know, this, the first Tuesday of every month, there's a group that meets and talks about reptiles and brings their reptiles and they have a raffle. And then, and then once you get in there, there's a tight knit community that's supported between events with WhatsApp groups, telegram groups, Facebook groups, 
but there's not even a close second uh, to meet up when it comes to that. Wow. Uh, that's not what I was expecting. So that, uh, I, I've never worked with meetup. Uh, I, I might take a look at, you know, trying to set this thing up. And I mean, even in Canada and Toronto's in a bloody lockdown again, started this week. Um, you're in Florida, so anything goes. Uh, <laughs> it's freezing down here too. It's oh, is it? Well, 76, 77 oh. degrees. Well, I've got a, a buddy, you know him, Wilford. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I have him on a list somewhere. I want to reach out and. I'll just, just let me know. He, he was my old business partner in uh, digital uh, blacksmiths, and he's doing great. Lightheart. He is right? uh, lightheart. Yeah. Lightheart. Yeah. Yeah, and his uh, skill was building communities, and it didn't matter if it was on uh, YouTube or on Facebook or wherever. Um, I'll tell you, like what he did, and I think this is important. So you you've got the overall group, which might be pets. And then he would go in and he would have dogs and then he would have schnauzers or bulldogs or and then he would go into keywords like bully sticks. And I know the schnauzer group that he built very quickly had one hundred and seventy five thousand people. And what he what he told uh, what he always said is um, you have to be engaged before you get married. That was Wilfred's uh, or, you know, by giving value, you're adding fuel to the fire. And it's so true because there's so many of these groups that arise. Now, I can't talk about Meetup, but I can talk about Facebook groups. Sure. And, um, you know, by putting in really great content all the time, your group can grow very quickly. Um, and uh, like 175,000 schnauzers around the world. Uh, that's pretty powerful. And the, the beautiful part of what he did was um, if you're building this group, people are going to be liking you. They're going to come back to your page and they're going to like your page. You're going to fo start following your posts. And even without doing any promotion, you're going to be the authority that people trust and then they buy. So by going over to your website or, or your um, Facebook page or profile, wherever you are, um, you can start promoting your products there. So he's very successful. He was very successful at that. And because you're getting real people that are coming here that want products in your niche, you're, you can build up a very good group of people, um, even driving them over to your website, not even necessarily over to Amazon. Amazon's always good. I, I, I still drive tons of people over to Amazon. And while I'm trying to drive them over to my e-commerce store one way or the other, you know, to give them value there. But, um, yeah, I've got to check out. Uh, I really do have to check out Meetup. I had no idea you were going to say that you took me off guard, um, but I got to check that out. But for me, like Facebook, uh, Facebook groups, Kelsey's uh, in the middle of building out the one Facebook group and we're doing it all organically. We don't want any cheap clicks. And I think that's important, too. Absolutely. You know, it, you can go out and I made the mistake of one of my brands giving it to a social media person when I had a social media company, I still have a social media company, but the, um, the person went out there and we got over a hundred thousand, um, likes on the page. So a hundred thousand people are liking and following. Well, then Wilfred came in and he took a look and he goes, this is crap. He says, um, I could post all day long here, valuable content. But what this person did is they went over for really cheap clicks. It was more along Pacific Rim and India, Bangladesh, because they were cheap clicks, like they were a penny a piece. And he says, this is no value at all. Yep. And that was a learning lesson, you know, back a few years ago that, wow, I, I just paid somebody a lot of money to do this. And I got, you know, I can't even use it. I have to use, I have to create another group that's real. Yeah, you know, you know something, something, something. Uh, you didn't say this directly, but and, and this is to be the first time that I verbalize this. So, like, mm -hmm. be prepared to like go back and forth with me. Um, I find that the caliber of people. Let me say it, and then we'll clean it up. So, okay. I, I'm finding that the caliber of people that join your in-person meetup event, RSVP, and actually attend 
are willing to go so much further with you and for you than someone that hits join group and, you know, has the option to be like a 99% lurker in a Facebook group. Right. Right. No, I, I would uh, agree a hundred percent. Um, you know, if you are going out and I I've seen this with, you know, we have our ASM, uh, our Toronto uh, meetup group, which hasn't met in a long time, but, uh, you know, you get to know people, you break bread with people during these meetings, you get to talk to them. It's a whole different ball game than, yeah, over a virtual summit, let's say, which I still have problems with because, uh, I love going to the events and no matter what, if you have breakout rooms or whatever it is, it's not the same. And doing a virtual summit this whole year, it's, it's, it's horrible. Cause you can't meet people. Yeah. I, I met you <clears throat> last, well, we, we knew each other before, but I met you in person last February. That was the last event I went to. Yeah, we were, I think San Fran was getting shut That's, down while we were there. While we were there. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, one of the other things that this sounds like, and you tell me if this is, uh, we could go look down this path. Influencers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's basically, there's five types of influencers. The bottom two are a micro and, um, a nano and micro influencer. And that's basically people that have under a hundred thousand and following. I'm writing this down. Oh, you're for right. <laughs> Come on. You talk. Let me get my notes real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're the only type of influencer that I would go after are uh, nano and micro influencers because they're a hundred thousand. It's micro nano influencers are 1000 to uh, 10,000. Uh, micro are 10,000 to 100,000. And uh, then you're getting into, you know, the, the 250,000, the up to 2.5 and then 2.5 and up, which are typically the celebrities. I don't go there. Um, no need to waste your money. What you should be looking at, or at least in my opinion, where we get a lot of success are nano. And if you go and target nano influencers, find nano influencers, do your homework and just try to target them uh, in your niche and reach out. They're usually way more than happy. They're honored to, to really get somebody noticing them, you know, and the beautiful part about nano influencers, they have a small group, they're friends and family. And if they are posting on like blogs or if they are, um, on Instagram and they tell somebody to, or, or you ask them to, to tag you or do something, they'll do it. And if you continually work with them and, and engage and comment, then you can bring them over to the best, the, I call it like, if you really want to build your, your community, you do it with brand influencers and brand ambassadors. And brand ambassadors, um, basically for us, would be an army of nano and micro influencers willing to do anything for free or at a very low cost. They love your product. So let's say uh, bully sticks. So pet enthusiasts who maybe have just large dogs, small dogs, you name it. Then you can go, you know, after the breeds of dogs. Then you could start looking for these nano influencers and it's very easy to find these type of, of influencers, but you can start just targeting them, letting them know that you like what they're, they're doing, um, engaging, commenting, following, and it would not take much to get somebody to really love your product. The other way of doing it, Carlos, I don't know if you've ever done this, but, uh, Paul Barron, Shane and, and I and Jason Ayers, uh, like we've got the, um, the, the chat agency, the yeah, squad. the squad and, uh, Paul is the brain, you, you know, Paul is definitely the brain behind all of this, but he's been doing this for a couple of years where, um, he'll, he has a system where he'll find the audience, he'll, the influencers, he'll get them to buy real, like they buy on Amazon. It's not like a rebate. They buy, then he reaches out and he tries to convert the customer 
the nano influencer over to providing content. Then once he starts to see that there's interest, he asks and he drives people over to a landing page, which says, hey, look, if you want to be a brand ambassador, you love our product, um, they enter into a contract. An agreement that they have to post three times, you know, they, they add content, they do whatever. It's perpetual. You never run out of content. And I, I talked about this or Paul was on a, a little while ago where we talked about uh, getting for his brand 2000 uh, images in three months. Sounds expensive. It was free. What? <laughs> free. Sign me up. Yeah. I've been trying. You don't listen. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyways, and the majority, so most of that content came from nano influencers and a good chunk. And I'm talking about the content that people write. Um, and then get this. He went out there and he said, oh, I need a video for Amazon Live. And I needed to pinpoint these benefits of my product. Over the weekend, over the week, he got 30 really great videos and he paid zero. That's insane. It is. It really is. So I got to have him on. But, you know, now that I've taken up all your time, um, <laughs> It's just, a, it's a really great process. And, you know, again, building a community, I can show you, um, and a matter, you know, you think if, if you have that group on Meetup and you combine it with a nano influencer, you're getting the exact same thing. A brand ambassador has passion for your product. They love it. They'll do anything for you. Um, a Meetup, you get the same sort of, you know, they respect i guess or authority you're the authority talking to them about your product if i understand what you're talking no about. you're absolutely right and at a certain stage if done correctly you become the nano influencer like you become the influencer in in that area with that group uh, I, ha I had a guest uh on the on the meetup group on the amazon meetup group uh late uh, october 24th his name was craig mount he's the co-founder of nerdy nuts i don't know if you heard about it but it's an amazing peanut butter he's a genius when it comes to branding i'd love to get you and this guy in the same room but the he as a matter of fact at the time that we were speaking they had just for like for, for some advertising and some cool they were going to release a pumpkin spice peanut butter so they decided the way to do it was to go buy a 2200 pound pumpkin and carve it and that was going to be like the awareness like hold it 2200 pound yeah yeah it, it was either like 1800 pounds or or 2200 pound pumpkin it was this massive thing it's on his facebook and his youtube like you can check it out but look up nerdy nuts um craig mount but he he mentioned how he was doing almost exactly what you're talking about with nano influencers with TikTok, and that he was selling the the Jesus out of this peanut butter with these influencers and was paying nothing because they didn't know their worth sort of yet at that stage. Like they were just, this was such a huge plus for them that they were like, let's do it. Um, but what a great episode too, that's in the video vault. So if anyone decides to get that, that, that free month of the video vault, check out. Oh, we haven't even talked the secret giveaway that we were giving away at the end of the podcast. Thank you, Carlos so much. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, uh, I've been I know I was it. seeing it. Kelsey, uh, yeah, yeah, it's been a uh, that Norm can't really read the fine print. So. I can't see anything, it's it's like you know, a millimeter on my screen. So, yeah, but yeah, maybe we can uh, just talk about that for a second. Uh, sure, the prize. Uh, so Carlos, the Amazon Video Vault, I think we got uh, two free passes, I believe. Okay. Uh, There's over a thousand videos in there, uh, workshops, presentations, how tos. Um, there are recording of our actual uh, meetup events and just a wealth of information is broken up by topic, too. So you're not just combing through a thousand different videos trying to figure it out. Um, cool stuff and a lot of cool stuff coming out in the next week or two that you'd just be in there and be able to get, obviously. I, I I am, and way before I met you, Carlos, I was a, a member of uh, the Video Vault Wizards of Amazon, yep. and um, 
t tons of value, you know, it, it, and when you get to see, like he said, there's hundreds, if not thousands of different episodes uh, in there or trainings or, you know, it, it's, it's really worth it. So we're going to do a, um, a giveaway at the end and uh, we'll wait to the end, I guess. Right. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, post um, hashtag we love Carlos in the comment section and you'll be entered into the we love Carlos. I got to see this. Say that again, Norm. Yeah. What is it? What is it? I love Carlos. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I said it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, all right. So, you know, just uh, again, a couple of shout outs here too. Uh, I know it's Black Friday and we're taking you away from your time, but uh, look, hey, thank you, uh, Rad and Simon and Dr. Cause, Marina, Facebook user that must be coming from our, our group. That's Victor. Victor. All right. Well, we got Victor some as well. Uh, yep. And we'll get to that in a second. Elch and Sharon, David. Thank you, everybody. Marcia, uh, Darwin, thank you all for watching and uh, you know taking time out of your day. Yarrow. And these are uh, real people, too. This is crazy. I'm just kidding. Yeah, for, for Black Friday? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyways, thank you all for our community, which is growing. And, uh, you know, we, we just love everybody, you know, who's who's not only watching this live, but, you know, watch this afterwards and are part of our group. And if you're not part of our group, please join the group. Um, Kelsey will tell you all about that at the end. I swear he's tell you about 10 times during the podcast too. But uh, let's get back to the questions, Kelsey. Is there anything? Yep. Yeah, uh, so we have a couple of questions coming in. Um, one is from Simon, just about the brand ambassadors. Uh, how many brand ambassadors do you recommend using? Well, it, it, you know, it depends on the conversion. I would use as many as I could convert. So if you've got people out and it's very simple, like it, it, you can target brand ambassadors by going out. I'll give you, a, I'm going to go down a different rabbit hole here for a second. But you can go to places like Thomas and Buzz Sumo um, in Telefluence and find paid nano influencers. You're still gonna pay. You'll 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 find that there's people out there willing to help you out. It's gonna be a, some form of payment plus the membership. So Buzz Sumo is ninety nine dollars. Uh, Thomason has special rates. Special rates for our group. Um, I think it's fifty bucks for their six hundred ninety nine dollar package. Um, but anyways, uh, then you you can go out and what I recommend is let's say that you're in the pet niche. Let's say bully sticks. You find an article that's about bully sticks that's written by an influencer. So just bully stick blog, bully stick influencer. Um, dog influencer, pet blog influencer, just find it on Amazon. Go to there, find the, 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 the page that you like. Copy the URL. This is the simplest thing. Type related colon and put the URL there and it will give you a ton of other blog or other influencers that you can pick from and then you can reach out to. You can also go and, and do something really simple. Type in uh, search string. So it is another search operator called site colon. And then you can put site colon Instagram space bully sticks space advertising. And this is the tricky one. Quotes in quotes, put Instagram photos and in uh, photos and videos. And then at the end of it, space minus sign explore. So what's this doing? It's going into Instagram. It's a Boolean search, right? It, yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's all you're doing is you're you're going to go in. It's going to look for people on Instagram who are advertising or looking to advertise bully sticks, and they're an influ they're they're an Instagram profile that has photos and videos as part of their profile. And it's going to get rid of all the junk stuff for you. So minus explore. I learned that from Dan Fernandez over at um, Thomason. And you can do something very similar for Facebook site colon. And then you put facebook.com space. And you can put in quotations 1000 dot 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 10,000 uh, space like end quotation. 
and run that. And you can put home, space home, and that'll take you to the person's profile page. So those are just some simple ways to go and find some influencers. Now, how many? Sorry, I went down a whole other rabbit hole there, but that's a really quick, fast, dirty way to do it other than hashtag, hashtag bully sticks. You'll see all the influencers that, you, you know, and you just check them. It's a manual process. And then you can just start to follow them and comment on them. At the end of the day with, with influencers, if they're um, nano, micro, mega, you name it, um, they all want to have uh, engagement. So comment and, and you know, let them know that uh, you like what they do. And then when you do reach out to them, do not, um, do not be egotistical. Tell them how, they're, um, how you want to connect with them because you have a similar personality uh, or tell them about your brand. You want to align it with them because they're so awesome. And you'll get a much better response in talking about yourself. Just like, uh, you know, when I was uh, in high school, when I talked all about myself, Oof. I always got stood up, you know, always got stood up. You went back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Went back. If you talk about yourself, that's the last thing people want to hear. So uh, anyways, um, and that's the same with, with influencers. You know, you, you, you really want to pat them on the back and get them to come out to you and you'll find that you have a much better chance. And if you can get influencers to do it and if you can get a hundred of them to to start doing something for you awesome if you can get 30 of them doing something great brand ambassadors it's a tougher go because these are people now that are going to actually do this for you for free they love the product they love i was just telling kelsey i saw um uh, somebody i i bought um a, a beard shampoo and it's it it really it carlos <laughs> I, I went around to Connie and 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 Kelly. I said, "You got to smell this." Then I used it, and the it shampoo was really your beard. Well, I both the beard. It was the yeah. beard. Smell the was, beard. Yeah, I went around. They had to <laughs> smell, smell the, the beard. Kind of gross, but um, now I'm gonna I'm reaching out to them because it was such a great product, and you know I, I I'd love to be able to represent this guy's brand because it's so great. Um, it's the same thing. If somebody buys the product from a pet audience and they they love what you're doing, some of these influencers will reach out to you. That's a lot easier to get than um, you know having to follow up and engage and engage and engage. All right, we do uh, have a couple more questions coming in. Um, this one is from Darwin, uh, I've never used Meetup uh, before. Uh, what stage of my business, or let's call it the Amazon journey, would start starting a Meetup community be a good option? Um, is it is this? I'll, I'll do both, but this could be. I don't know if you're asking. You're an Amazon seller, and you want to know when you should start a Meetup group that's supporting your brand that you're selling, or should you start a Meetup community f to support Amazon sellers? Uh, I believe it's the first one. Um, be, be well before you get your product is definitely a perfect time. Uh, if you're wanting to use people from that community to, you, you could do it a year before your launch. As a matter of fact, I, I know some people that are like, I, I don't have the finances for this right now, but I know for sure next year I'm going to be launching my PL product. And I'm like, well, build that community now, build your social media now, engage, build your community. Um, and you'd be light years ahead of people by this time next year when you're launching your product. So you can definitely start well before you launch your product. Okay. And we got another one from Dr. Cause. Hey, Carlos. Oh, hold it. Just, just oh. a sec there. So Carlos, it also, if you don't have anything to sell, then it just looks like there's pure engagement, right? You're Absolutely. not selling anything. So people are talking to you because you were the authority of, your product absolutely. Your, your, or the niche. Well, yeah, absolutely. Like, so when, when I start my events, that's a pretty popular question I get. And they're like, look, you're hosting the events for free and you're successful at doing blank. What's the catch? Like, why are you doing this? Um, my answer for the Amazon seller meetup group, which is a good one. You get somebody new in there and they're like, wait a minute, I heard you on a podcast. You, you say you make X and you've been, you know, 
all this stuff going on, why are you hosting these events for free? And my answer was really straightforward. I was like, well, right now, I don't have anything to sell you in that regard. Like I'm gonna create courses and I'm hoping I have a community to be able to sell them to in the future. I wanna create, I wanna write a book and I want you to buy that $10 book. I don't want you to ask me for a discount. You know, I wanna create an event and I'm gonna ask you to support it by buying a ticket. Uh, when I have an ask, I'm gonna ask it. Um, right now I just want to build community and geek out with you and enjoy what we're doing. So, uh, there is a goal and there is, you know, honesty involved, but, um, not, not selling all the time is good. <laughs> so you have nothing to sell, build the community, focus on those relationships and getting to know people. So you could definitely start that meetup group way before, um, you even start sourcing your product. It's so refreshing when you go and you meet somebody and they're not trying to sell you something. Yeah. It's a rare thing nowadays. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right. Uh, okay. So Dr. Cause, Hey Carlos, you're the man. Um, can you give Thank advice you. for a new brand, uh, three top action items to take to build your group or following? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, one is to actually build it. Uh, if you're talking about meetup.com, create the actual meetup.com group. Some some good things, I would not name it a business name. I would name it, you know, something that everyone could kind of get around. So if you had a dog grooming brush that you wanted to sell, I wouldn't, I mean, your business name was like ABC dog grooming, grooming brushes.com. I wouldn't name your group ABC dog grooming brushes.com. I would name it something like dog lovers of, you know, of the world of earth. I don't know, like something fun that people would want to engage with. And then, um, other, uh, other things that I would do is, um, almost immediately, I can't emphasize this enough, almost immediately start looking at what, what would a leadership team look like for this to succeed? Um, who are the ideal people that you'd want to have in your group that could host events on their own as well? um that could you know help you connect with a broader audience uh for me without having a a team or knowing what a team was before i even launched the group um wouldn't have allowed me to do what what i've done uh finally be receptive to the actual group um as far as building community it's a it's a community and not a dictatorship it is yours, but if you want a dictatorship, you're not going to have a very big community. Mm. Like, for example, my 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 Amazon business, talking about the Amazon meetup again, is 85% private label and 15% wholesale. Uh, I no longer do arbitrage. I used to do arbitrage a long time ago. Um, I, I used to do a lot of different things. So if it was kind of up to me, I would think that all of my Amazon meetup events would be my 85%, which is private label. But my community is everything it's private label it's wholesale it's i'm just starting it's merch by amazon it's amazon self-publishing it's ra it's oa it's handmade and i love it i love it all so to be supportive of my community i put an equal i, I take that into account and i say you know what i'm probably not going to be thrilled to listen to this event about arbitrage but i know a lot of people in my group will be and i know that that might be the quickest path for them to get to private label so treating it like a community and not a dictatorship is important. I, those would be my three that I can think of. That's an awesome question. Okay. So when do you and how do you, let's say you have a community and you have somebody that, um, uh, <laughs> how do I say this nicely? Is a bit of a jerk. Sure. Okay. So you just approach them and let them know, look, we, well, first of all, you're probably not going to say you're out of here, right? You know, the first one, sure. first time, but I, like, I, I've seen people that just disrupt meetings and just want to be the person talking all the yeah. time, similar, like to what I'm doing right now, you know, we're talking to you all the time, <laughs> but uh, yeah, how do you handle that? Uh, this is also an advantage of meeting in person and having that in-person community over over online. And again, I'm not saying it's either or. You should definitely do both. But if you're doing this via a Facebook post, it's really hard to get everything behind that, like just a written word. But if somebody's disrupting the group and, and I can tie that to body language, 
um, I can tell the difference immediately, whether it's coming from a place of frustration or coming from a place of like aggression. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just that alone would, would change how I would do it. But what I would do if some, usually if somebody's being disruptive in the group and they're going the route of, I know it all, it's me, your way sucks. There's only one way to succeed on Amazon. Like if that's the one, um, what I do, I f I'm a builder, not a destroyer. You know what I mean? I, I want to build this person. I want them to be in part of the group. I know they know things that I don't know yet. And, and I want to know those things. So what I will do is I'll, I, I like to take the, fir uh, the first step of let's embrace this person, build them. Uh, they'll be a better person if they're part of this community. And what I'll say, look, I love what you're saying on that. Like, I, I definitely want to talk about this over drinks afterwards. Like you seem like a fascinating person. Do you mind coming up front with me? and co-hosting this event with me. So it's almost like the teacher gets the unruly kid and brings them like to that special spot next to them. It allows you to do a few things. One, the person's probably never been in front of a big group speaking before. So they may just bow out. And if they bow out, then they really don't have a position of keeping to talk from the back of the room. If they do come up front, they now need to be able to answer a field of questions and not shoot everybody down. So it forces them into a position of, look, we can be friends. This doesn't have to be aggressive. B, you now need to like be in front with me and like shine. And uh, the other one is I get to learn from them too, finally. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like everybody knows things that you don't. I, I love the fact that we what we do, there's new stuff to learn every day. Wow, you have some rock stars here. McLean's here. She's awesome. I actually got to meet her when she came down to Miami once. I still have not. I met virtually, but not not in not in person yet. There was like five <laughs> different people the day that uh, she was in in Miami that I had never met, and I was bouncing all around. But um, I hope I'm saying that right. McLean is somebody on social media that I've seen from a distance for a while that I, I've I've always wanted to meet and connect with. So cool seeing you here. I'm glad you like what I'm saying, and I know you're not saying that because I've seen you rip people apart too. So. <laughs> She has like no filter for that stuff <laughs> if she doesn't like it. So cool. Okay. Right. More, questions, more questions. Okay. Um, so uh, there was a couple questions about the, the roadmap for the brand ambassador route. So maybe, I don't know if we can make like a, we can make it like an illustration, put them in the show notes or something, but I think uh, Usman and uh someone else was asking or Marsha was asking for uh, them. But uh, another one, this is from oh, Faye. Um, being that yesterday was Thanksgiving, I'd like to thank you, Norm, uh, for the show that has so many valuable, so much valuable content. Oh, Make sure you're very you, welcome. You, Make sure you pay that invoice, Norm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that $20 went very far. <laughs> and we have uh, currently three people um, entered in the draw. Um, again, if you want uh, a free month for Carlos's uh, video vault, uh, write the hashtag. We love. Let me do this. Say it, Kels. We Say love it. Carlos. Yes. We, go. we all love Carlos, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dalvin um, has a question. I don't know if you got to him. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, so he's got a couple. First one. Um, have you seen or heard of meetups in New York? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. There's, there's two fairly large, um, Amazon seller meetup groups in New York. I don't know. I think they met like once a month or once every six months, uh, every six weeks. Ours is 16 events per month. Yeah, so it's crazy. There, there's a difference. It's a, mine's a divorce worthy amount of, uh, everyone's like, what's the secret for doing it? It's like that your wife is okay with that. And she is supportive of that. That's like the key to making it work. But yeah, there definitely is. Something cool is we opened up a, an actual location now that's dedicated to our event called Wizards of Ecom. And should it go well, uh, plans are in 2022 to actually open up a location in New York. So um, maybe we'll be in New York soon. What about Innisfil? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I also, saw, I also saw a question from Oleg. Um, why do they do it for free? Why do influencers or brand ambassadors do something for free? Good question. So what they've done is they've used a product. So let's say it's soap. They've used the soap or the beard shampoo. So I would, 
like I would go out there as an influencer if that company ever came to me and said, "Hey, you know, um, would you uh, would you help promote this?" Absolutely, I would do this. Um, if they wanted to convert this over to a brand ambassador where I'd have to provide content, I've got to love this product. And I might use a bit more of their product. I might see, hey, you know, over a period of a month what it's like. Um, they'll come back to me and they'll probably send me an email and saying, look, uh, get 15% off. Uh, you have to buy at least three of the products over a period of the next quarter. And you have to provide um, three images every or one image a week or one video every quarter. It'll tell you exactly what to do. And if I love it and I want to get pro product at a, um, a low rate, then I can go in and I can do that. And I'd be happy to do that. Um, just rule of thumb, uh, don't abuse brand ambassadors. Uh, brand ambassadors will, will do things for free for you, especially images, social proof that you can use for Amazon posts, videos that you can use for Amazon Live, but also all your social media for repurposing. But one of the rules of thumb, this can this was uh, the this is the way that Paul sets it up. Any content that people write and distribute, it's only fair that you you pay them. Um, you know they they are giving up your time. And uh, it, it, you, I, I find that if you would pay somebody for that, then you got somebody for life. So, and they're doing it for free, all that other stuff, just because they love the product. And I guarantee you, if you've, I don't know if it's plastic shoe stretchers, you're not gonna get a huge influencer group. But if you've got something like a uh, beauty product or dog related product, um, you, you could get a, a ton of influencers. Okay, um, we are coming up to the hour mark, so I don't know, um, Carlos, how are you doing for time? Um, oh, are you mute? Oh, there we Sorry, go. Sorry, I muted myself. I have this like acid reflux cough going on. No, I, I have time. Okay, I, I can. Great. Um, okay, so from Darwin again, uh, Carlos, with all your businesses, uh, you do do you find yourself looking at the next thing too much or spreading out too thin uh, to where you start losing focus and it affects your business? If you know or do you know how to combat that um do, do i have the, the the there's no quick answer to that so that's something that i've never solved i'm not sure that i'll ever solve that in my life um we're blessed with i guess a mind that thinks that way those seize opportunities um if i don't think you can stop it i think you need to what i've done is i get to a point where i can acknowledge it and I can put it in a place that I know is safe because a long time ago, I would need to execute on it and breathe life into it and then, you know, build processes and step back. But it just, it just burned me out. It made me um, average at a bunch of things. And what I do now is I have a safe spot to put it. My safe spot's actually Trello and or writing pads. I still like to write a lot of stuff down. And when I get it there, I no longer need to go on this loop about you need to execute on this, what you need to do. If I do have a great idea about it, I go back to that spot where it's at and I add to it. And it's safe for me to revisit at a later date. And then the, the way I combat this and imposter syndrome and, you know, all this beating myself up every other day, <laughs> every other day about you're not good enough to do this. Who do you think you are? And well, you have so much on your plate. Um, I think I think it comes down to a mastermind and and not your typical mastermind I, I think as to be a successful entrepreneur you need one mastermind and that needs to be in the home so your significant other needs to be at least that one mastermind and, and mine i have an amazing wife and she's not an entrepreneur <laughs> and that's my that that's who keeps me reined in that's when i'm like all mentally beat mentally and emotionally beat up and taking too much on i can go back and she could say she she can clearly see it and and we can work my way out of it i hope that helps very good okay awesome um also just uh if you're commenting in the facebook group um you'll see it comes up as like facebook user um this is yachin uh, he says, oh my God, I was nearly missing the, this fantastic discussion. Hello, oh, yeah, great guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello to our boss, Carlos. Yeah, Ching uh, is amazing. That is a brilliant, brilliant entrepreneur there. He is. Yeah. Yes, he is. 
Okay, let's see. I think we have another one. Um, so Marsha's asking, are these meetups in person or in Zoom now? Uh, currently, they're on Zoom, except for one Thursday evening event each week as we slowly transition into uh, going back to in person. When we go back to in person, currently it's scheduled for the first Saturday of 2021. So all of those events now are still on Zoom. And when we do go back to the new norm, we're still going to have six solely Zoom-based events per month in addition to our in-person events because we've just met a lot of amazing people on Zoom that otherwise could not have been part of the group. Okay. And this is from Faye. Uh, Carlos, any AMZ meetings in uh, North Carolina? I totally come down to Florida for years. Uh, where can I find out more information? Yeah, if you come down, I'll tell you what, if you come all the way down from New York, I'll cover the Airbnb. You just reach out and I'll take care of it. I'll stick you in one of my Airbnbs or I'll do that. And you can pick the topic. Like you can handle, <laughs> handle the flight. I'll let you pick the topic and I'll put you in an Airbnb. Um, oh, but the, where can you find out more info? The easiest way, because meetup.com itself is is challenging to navigate, uh, on Meetup, we're South Florida FBA Amazon sellers. But if you want to find an easy way to get a link there, plus see all the different events we have going on, like we have Entrepreneurs Book Club, 16 different events. We have events in Spanish. We have events in English. We're starting events in Russian. Um, it, it's pretty wild. The easiest way to do that is going to be um, we have a 100. Uh, Norm, can I can I put the Telegram group in here, uh, the chat group? You can do anything you want. Oh, I like that. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we have a, a, a completely free um, Amazon chat group on Telegram. So if you go to amazongroupchat.com, it'll show you how to get in there, and then you'll see all of the different events that we have. Or you could just text the word Amazon to 69922 and it'll give you the link to our Amazon group. And then you'll get Jenny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, just a second. Sorry, I was just typing the link. Okay. Um, yeah, so we had a couple of people asking about how do you okay. join this, uh, the Zoom groups, um, Marsha. Um, so I'll put the link. I'll. We'll find the Amazon group chat and put it in the, in the comments. Um, this has been such a treat. Thanks to all three of you. Thank you, Marcia. Um, yes, thank you. And I think the last question is from Oleg about uh, the ambassadors or influencers. How do you manage the rights for the content that they produce? Oh, nice. So <laughs> that is a great question. And if you don't do that, if you don't manage the copyright or the transfer, um, I had this happen with a, a client who went out, spent a ton of money, like thousands of dollars on a video, and he got it. It was a beautiful video. But then when he put it on Amazon for his listing, the guy, uh, it, it was a copyright issue and he could only use it on YouTube. So what you need to do is make sure that you have a copyright uh, or sorry, a, um, a contract between them saying that they transfer the information over to you that you have the rights to promote it and um, then that should be fine they, and I'm sure you can find templates for that um, on the internet if you're having problems with that just let me know but uh, yeah you have to make sure that you get 100% ownership uh, uh, of the copyright or at least the accessibility to use it in any way that you want Okay, um, I think that's it. Comments and questions. Yeah, so uh, we can start the the wheel if you'd like. Okay. Oh, I just I just have one last question for Carlos. Uh -oh. So I know that you're like me. You like writing um, processes, mm -hmm. uh, SOPs. So is there a way or is there a process? Um, like, what types of processes should people write to help scale? their group. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Um, I, I thought something that's been very helpful for me with groups and processes to do this is, um, God, I'm losing the word right now. Yeah. It's such an easy word. I'm, so you know, you know, every Friday something's going to happen. It's a, a, a recurring event. 
so something you can be, you know, that every Monday, this is going to happen every Wednesday, this is going to happen. So consistency, that's the word. Oh, okay. Yeah. So consistency is, is just King when it comes to that. So I've not, you, what I find you cannot be successful in is every Monday at 9 AM, you post an inspirational meme and that's all you do. Mm. Right. So what, what I like to, how I like to approach groups is, and I actually learned this from digital marketer is you create five buckets. And, and these buckets are going to be, um, the themes of content that, or satellite topics that your group posts on. So let's say that I have a, um, let's just say we'll go with beard oil. I'll try to do beard oil to there stay in the spirit of norm. Right. Um, now uh, what, well, you know what, let me, let me use the actual example they gave in case I mangle this for time's sake. So Rosetta stone, Rosetta stone does an amazing job with their Facebook community. And you can look at everything they post and you know the buckets that it falls in. So one of them is customs. Obviously, if you want to know about customs around the world, then you, you'd you be hard pressed to not also talk about the languages that affect those customs. Another one is famous people that know multiple languages. This is an obvious one. You, the, 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 what's implied is that there may be that they're super famous and intelligent because they know multiple languages and what were those languages another one is content that allows you to um consume large amounts of new information quickly uh and that's something if you want to learn a new language nobody's like i want to learn a new language and be able to converse in 10 years like everyone seems to want to do it in a week so this is very you know very relevant here um and i they have one more which is travel obvious if you travel you want to know how to say give me a cup of coffee i need help where's the train so all of their content that they post falls into those buckets the content creators even they don't create the majority of this content but it allows me to say wow norm constantly puts out informations on how to create you know how to learn large amounts of information quickly so i'm going to constantly be sharing norm's new information with my group Norman turn sees this and he's an influencer in his community. And he's like, wow, this person really pushes out my content for me all the time. Uh, now there's a great synergy there and an opportunity to create, uh, uh, what would you call it? Um, influencer like relationships when I do reach out. So it creating that ahead of time for a group gives you a solid roadmap and gives you a clear path on who you want to be connecting with to build this group. The one thing I can say that has helped a lot in a community, because we've been talking a lot about Amazon selling and my Amazon seller group, but for physical products, is I found that it's important to add a bucket, which almost trains people to know like, hey, eventually I'm going to post something here for you guys to buy. And the easiest way to do that without always having something to buy is you want it to have like a sense of urgency. You want people to act and you want to know who has an Amazon account. And you also want it to be a deal. And you want it to be relevant to what you're talking about. So where do you find this? Amazon, Amazon lightning deals. It's very easy. They're constantly updating. It's a very real sense of urgency. It's a trusted site and it's the platform I'm usually going to want them to buy from. So what I'll do is weekly, I'll drop in a, an email list or anything like that, an Amazon lightning deal. So that when I do come out with a product, it's like, wow, you know, this person hasn't posted something for us to buy in two years. And now he's posting it. This seems weird. No, people are almost expecting me to post something about that. So that's, that's, uh, that would be my answer. I hope that helps. It does. <laughs> okay. And I think we're coming to the end, by the way, just one more th uh, thing. Hashtag we love Carlos to enter into the, the one month of, uh, the vault. So please, if you haven't done it, do it over the next 30 seconds or so. And then we'll have our um, our draw. All right, Carlos, is there anything else that you'd like to add? This is the the last question, the last tip, whatever you think is relevant. I think we covered a lot. Just, we did. Uh, I I think I just can't encourage people enough just how rewarding it is to, uh, to build a, a community. Rewarding in in you know financial profits but as well as just rewarding um, period, just in life, uh, you're having building connections in your niche, um, having people sharing your stuff out and wanting to talk about you. Um, it's just extremely rewarding uh, to do. And I suggest doing it now 
don't think you need to be an expert in the field to do that. That's just another thing I see people get hung up on. If, if you do, if you do encounter that and you feel like, who am I to create a group about this? You know, I don't have a doctorate in that, uh, believe it or not, you would be more connectable. If, is that a word connectable? Like people would connect with you more in some of my events, I'm getting up there and I'm presenting we have a, a, a beginner hour and people ask questions. And I'm noticing like, wow, I'm not getting the types of questions like I imagine beginners would ask. And then we had somebody come up and I was like, look, let me get a total newbie to come up and sit up here in the beginner hour with me. And all of a sudden, everybody started asking those really cool, awesome questions to the newbie. They felt almost intimidated asking me. So there's a strength in starting as, from the beginning. I got to tell you this. So uh, I had an event with uh, Dave Kettner um, in Hawaii just after the Illuminati event, which is Helium 10 Elite now. So uh, anyways, we had this event. Uh, Kevin King came. So he was at the event as well as one of the uh, speakers. Anyways, there's a group of people that are um, that are the students, participants. And uh, anyways, he came up, Kevin came up to me and he said, uh, holy crap, Norm, you, you know, have you ever talked to this guy over here about what he's doing? And I didn't. Like, I, I've talked to him about what we're doing on Amazon. He goes, I got to hire this guy. Well, guess who that guy was? Wilfred. Ha. Huh. So Wilfred Lightheart attended as a student. Nobody knew that he was this guru with building uh, communities. And all of a sudden, bang, you know, he's teaching us. He's up there talking. So, uh, yeah, and that's, a, that's one last thing I'd like to say is that if you don't know something, don't fake it. If somebody asks this question here, I don't know it. I say, yeah, I don't know it. Same thing with events. You can start a community, and if people are asking you questions, you don't know it just i don't know it but i'll find the answer and, and it's just as good to be able to say or better when someone asks a question even if you do know it instead say you really want to talk to norm about that norm's the go-to guy like you you connect that's what you want to do you want to mm. foster those communications so when someone asks the question sometimes it's maybe not even the best thing to be the smartest person in the room on it like you want to get somebody else as ask answering that and if you don't know it even better yeah have somebody in your group that I, I say this sometimes I'm like, you know what? I'm going to let the group weigh in on this. What, what do you guys think? Who, who wants to chime in on this? And uh, 35 minutes later, everybody feels like they're in the best group of their, you know, the best event of their life and communication dialogue. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. So Kelsey. Yes. I'm here. Is it that time? Is that time? Hope, Just about, <laughs> quickly before that, we got one. That snuck in with Don. Oh. Um, my wife, of my uh, partner, we both bring things to the table. We agree and disagree regularly, but ultimately come down to a good conclusion. Would you recommend starting a meetup with her? Well, any, anything you start, your wife is your partner on it. So I, I think what you're saying is, you know, attendee facing, does it show that she is the, you know, co-organizer with you in your group? Um, yeah, of course. Why not? I mean, I, I think I think that's great. I think it's a great thing to do. Um, uh, you you know, my wife and I don't. We only have like two businesses that we're legal partners on, and neither one of us wants to add to that just because it just adds one more thing that we would potentially need to disagree about sometimes. <laughs> but I, I I don't. That's your partner again. Whether you add her or not, she is your partner. So anything you start or she starts, you are the partner of it. Like, so I'd say yes. Okay. And I can see your wife in the background just nodding. So, oh, I'm getting a lot of points off this. I'm going to say, <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not even here. Uh, All right. Okay. So now it's time for our wheel. Carlos, you haven't seen this yet, but this is what we do now. Um, okay. Where's so we've got, <laughs> we've got two giveaways. So um, I'll spend this twice. That's correct, right? Two? Yes. Okay, good. I don't want to be giving away too much. Um, all right, so here we go. Three, two, one. Oh. 
Oh, okay. Faye. Okay, so, Faye gets it. Okay, Faye is number one. Congratulations, Faye. And next. These are good odds. And Norm, what would I do? I'd just send you the link or a code or you pass it through? or Yeah, I just send it over to Kelsey and then he'll uh, <clears throat> take care of it. And Evelyn wins. Okay, very good. So there's there's right. five entrants? Yes. There, yep. I, I, I'm going to give one to all five if you permit it. I'll give one to all five people that. that there you go, guys. Friday, everybody wins. You can follow it with me for an hour and run Norm's rabbit holing. Like, we, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So there you Great. go. So, Kelsey, all you have to do is get the link from Carlos and everybody who entered. One, thank you, Carlos. That was yeah, gonna, that's so really Kelsey, great. I'm either going to send you a link or a code. I got to figure out which is the best way to do it on my end, and then you'll make sure that it gets to everybody. Is that how it'll work? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Um, yeah, I'll reach out to everyone. Um, or you can also email me, guys, at uh, k Norm dot com. Cool beans. Okay, so hey, Carlos, uh, we didn't get a chance to talk before the podcast, but you're gonna um, you, you, when we leave you, um, it's gonna look like you've uh, that you've you're gone, right? Uh, just hold on and, uh, I'll bring you back after, after the podcast. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So, okay. So I think that's it for the podcast. Carlos, sir. Thank you so much for, you know, coming on and spending so much time again, just how do people get a hold of you or the group? Um, anywhere on social media at wizards of Amazon and you can text me 305-902-1283. And then the telegram chat group, I'm, I'm constantly have it open it's open over here to my left right now which okay. is at uh, amazongroupchat.com now i also want to say that carlos hasn't talked about this i don't know where it stands this year but he's got an incredible amazon cruise that he hosts every year and uh what how where does that stand it got canceled by the carnival um uh, it was january 30th but uh, uh, we're, it looks like it's going to move to the following January, but every year we may throw in some kind of Alaskan cruise or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but as of right now, it's going to be January of the following year just because of uh, cruise regulations. But Right. Uh, yeah, I didn't know where that was going to go. But OnlineSellerCruise.com. Yeah, it, it's, it's a great cruise. Tons of people come out. But all right, Carlos, thank you again. Thanks for your generosity with all those giveaways too, by the way. Absolutely. All right, so we'll talk soon, and that's it for today's show, all about community. Hope you guys learned a lot. Um, we're going to have our next podcast on Monday. I think uh, Afalabi Oricon is going to be on, talking about working with China before the Chinese New Year's. Uh, let me see. Kelsey, let's finish the podcast off. Yeah. Okay, so if you haven't yet, please like and share the video. Um, you can join our Facebook group, uh, Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and e-commerce collective. Uh, yeah, we've got, I think, 250 now. We hit that mark. And nice. we're getting close to 1,000 followers. I think we're at like 950 or 997, something like that. So if you know anyone uh, interested in Amazon FBA, you can always, and just, or an online seller, um, you can go and Get them over to Norman Ferrari, K, the beard guy. Uh, oh, on Facebook. Yeah, on Facebook. So, all right. All right. That's it for me. Okay. And uh, Kelsey didn't do his job. Smash mm -hmm. likes, ring bells. <laughs> that's right. Follow us. There we go. Okay. All right. So, and next time you see Kelsey, there will be no stash. No, no, no. no. November. It's still uh, Alpha Lobby's episode. It's oh, okay. Still, all right. I'll okay. So, we can still see the Borat thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, please join us live Eastern Standard Time at noon. And like I said, Afalabi is going to be on from Honu Worldwide, and we're going to be discussing the Chinese New Year. So again, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you, Carlos, for being on, and we will see you on Monday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.